Good day doodlers and welcome to Draw Cartoons. Today I'm not just going to show you how to draw this character Huggy Wuggy from Poppy Playtime, but I'm also going to go through it step by step and analyze why the character looks so terrifying. I mean, come on, who didn't see this character on the thumbnail of the game over in Steam or wherever you got a hold of it? And then thought to themselves, wow, that's pretty freaky looking. On my channel, as you guys know, I love to explore these things a little bit deeper and try to figure out exactly where the design decisions came from. So keep an ear out for those little tips, because if you skip around, you're not going to hear those little analytical thoughts of mine as we go. If you end up enjoying this video, I would really appreciate a like and even a subscribe, which would help ensure that you don't miss future tutorials like this one in the future. With that, let's get going. Now to begin with, I'm going to show you guys my strategy for drawing characters that are facing the viewer. As always, I'd love to start with a vertical line, as straight as you can get it. You might want to use a ruler just to kind of help you out, but it's not necessary. It's just something that you can do to help you. But when a character is facing towards the viewer, I always like to do this line in the center. Now for Huggy Wuggy, we need to identify, if you have drawn this line, identify just above the halfway point. Now the halfway point is about here. So just above it is where we want his waist. So somewhere around there, you'll get more or less the right sort of leg length. Now with that in mind, what you could do is just kind of go ahead and cut this section in half. The top half is going to be the head. And this second half is going to be where the torso is. So straight away, we have our proportions kind of laid out for us. So we're just going to draw a bell shape for the torso. That is the shape of uh, Huggy Wuggy's belly here. It's very, it's very narrow at the top. As a matter of fact, you might actually want it a bit thinner than that. And as you're drawing downwards, you might find it helpful to just draw little spikes like this because the body is uh, covered in like a fur coat. So if you just do little kind of zigzags like that, you can get this nice almost like fur sensation going on or kind of like a hair going on. And then above this, what we want to do is draw an upside down triangle very gently because we need to refine some details once we've drawn it. So as you can see, I'm drawing uh, a triangle with soft edges and it meets the neck here. The neck is really, really narrow. As you can see, it's very, very slender. And it is something that very much adds to making Huggy Wuggy very creepy looking. So what might be helpful now that you've drawn this shape here, just going to tidy up a tiny bit, is again identify the midpoint of this line, which is about here. As you can see with the preview underneath, that's going to be more or less where the character's uh, lip is going to be, the middle of the top lip. So you can actually go ahead and draw that now if you want. Um, if you wanted to just draw the head, this is very much the section for you. So the mouth has a very unusual and therefore uh, somewhat unsettling look to it. It's almost like a duck's bill, like a cartoon duck's bill, but not really. It is it is unique and it, it definitely is a feature of Huggy Wuggy's face that just kind of makes it more terrifying. When its mouth is closed, it looks kind of cute. But as soon as it opens its mouth, and I'm just going to get rid of this part of the guideline just to show you, this is when all the teeth appear and they are very pointy. So make sure you, you, you do those teeth some justice by making them jagged and uneven, pointing in all kinds of different directions just to make it look a bit more scary. If the teeth are too even, you know, if I were to, if I were to draw like a, a Disney smile like that over the top, kind of imagine it like that, it's not nearly as scary. So the teeth are a huge contributing factor to why this character is genuinely a bit scary to look at. And don't even get me started on the eyes, which is what we are getting started on right now. So as you can see, we have these enormous pupils. Pupils, obviously, that's the that's the black bit inside the eye. Um, they are huge and they really could have gone for all kinds of eye shapes with this. They could have gone for like slitted uh, reptilian eyes if they wanted to, which is something that appears on obviously a lot of horror monster creatures, horror movie creatures, I should say. Like, for example, like a cat eye like that. They could have done that. They could have even done like a goat pupil that's sideways to make it look... Uh, that, that makes it look sleepy, actually. Maybe it's a good idea they didn't, <laughs> they didn't do that. They could have even gone for a tiny pupil, which is pretty scary. But something that doesn't happen a lot in horror creatures is the huge pupils like this. Huge pupils are genuinely reserved for things that really are endearing or cute or harmless in some measure. And yet they they pulled off this this genuinely horrifying creature, even with the huge pupils, um, which is one of the many reasons why I wanted to draw this character to showcase that. So we've got tufts of hair or fur, whatever you want to call it. It goes upwards like this, and it forms almost like a horn 
you know, like a devil kind of horn style like that. Gone a bit over the edge here, I'll just tidy that up for you. Um, it almost looks a bit like the Joker as well, you know, like the Joker from the Batman animated uh, series. Looks a little bit like that. So we've actually done the head and the torso now. Those are those are done. So if that's all you came for, then you, you're finished. But if you want to go ahead and try and draw the rest of the thing, the limbs are really interesting on this. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan out the height of the limbs that I want. Now, Huggy Wuggy, obviously, as the name suggests, has very, very long arms, a bit like Mr. Tickle. Um, so I'm going to bring the arms to about here. And I'm just going to draw like a blob gently on the end to symbolize where I want the hands to be. I very much like to plan ahead with my drawings. This is something that I encourage a lot of people uh, when it comes to teaching them how to draw. I, I very much say, hey, you want to plan ahead, just draw gently. Even if you're working on a pencil, obviously, if you're working digitally, you have the advantage of just being able to flawlessly erase things or even get rid of a whole layers. But I like to use stick figures like this just to kind of plan out where everything's going to go. So let's start with the legs. So the legs are going to be quite long and thin, just like the arms are. And again, you might want to do that technique where we draw some jagged sort of shapes downward, down from the waist like that. Again, it kind of shows a flow of the of the fur coat. And the feet are, they're kind of like the hands, they're kind of like monkey hands. Um, they're just kind of stuck on the end there. And now we basically just do the same thing for the other side because our character is facing towards us. This tutorial may still be handy if you want to draw Huggy Wuggy in a different pose because the principles are kind of the same. You're just not going to work with that central line, which is something that I like to do, which is uh, therefore for ease of drawing and also ease of teaching. You obviously wouldn't have this line in the middle because that's not going to help you pose your character. But the principles are kind of the same. Identify the midpoint and the legs are longer than the head and torso put together. Just kind of keep that in mind if you are going to draw this character in a different pose. And obviously the limbs are very slender and the fur always goes towards the extremity. The fur goes towards the hand, which is what I'm doing now. That's what I'm doing lots, lots of tiny little gentle strokes for to kind of build up this fur pattern. I recommend this generally if you are drawing animals or anything that is covered in hair. Um, I, would, I would generally say that you want to draw in the direction of the hair because you'll just get a much better and more consistent effect. Now there are indentations on the hands if you want to draw those in for the fingers, but at this point you're basically done. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm pretty happy with this, I don't think I have any further adjustments to do. I'm going to get this all tidied up and inked and coloured and stuff like that so you guys can see what it looks like when it's all finished. I, I very much encourage you to do the same, so I'll see you guys in just a second. And there we go. He was a little bit more terrifying as a sketch, actually, but I think that's got a bit more to do with the kind of scratchy lines of a sketch. So maybe there's another tip for you. If you want something to look at its scariest, maybe try and keep in the pencils when you color it in. Anyway, guys, like always, I would absolutely love to hear your suggestions for what I should do in a video next. It doesn't even have to be a tutorial, which is what I usually do. It could be something else. I've been thinking about branching out into reviewing art applications or even equipment like pencils. Yeah, I want to make all kinds of different content, so let me know what you would like to see. With that, guys, I would really love a like on this video and subscribing to the channel would really help me out as well. That's it for this time, guys. Have a great Halloween, and I will see you next time.